Hello and welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This is part 8, Common Problems with Castings. And in this video I will attempt to show you how to machine a spoked flywheel like this one. This flywheel is 3 and 3 quarter inches in diameter. And I have a couple of these, so I'm going to show you how to machine one of them. Here it is, here's the second of the flywheels, and as you can see it's a good bit bigger than the first one. That's because it needs machining down. Normally I would clean up these castings with a file, but they are actually so hard, I don't think I'll bother. I also haven't bothered truing it up too much, because it really is not worth it. I'm doing this just for the sake of the video. This casting is actually so bad, I would normally put it in the scrap bin. There's nothing wrong with the casting being hard. If the metal is hard, it's meant to be hard wearing. Most cast iron is slightly too soft in my opinion, but beautiful to machine. But there are limits. If you listen to the sound of the lathe, it's really struggling with this. The sound is very different to the previous video. The flywheel in the previous video was a very good quality casting, and I had no problems machining it at all. This one is chilled, and there are probably bits of random metal mixed in with the cast iron. So it's the worst case scenario. The metal is alternately hard and soft on the same piece. So as the lathe tool cuts the metal, you will get alternate grey and shiny patches. Now this is not a big problem on the centre boss, but it's going to be a problem on the outside edge and I haven't got to that bit yet. Common problems with castings are, just being badly made generally, containing foreign pieces of metal in the mix, as well as chilling, and also sand blowholes. I'll discuss chilling first. A chilled casting is when the casting is cooled too quickly, and the chilled part becomes rock hard, and I mean really hard. Almost impossible, in fact completely impossible to cut with a lathe tool, even a carbide tip lathe tool. It will just skate over the top of it when it comes to it. The only way out of it would be to surface grind it, and I don't have one of those, and neither do most other people. The parts often affected by being chilled are the thinner parts, for instance steam chest covers, which are quite thin and are very easily chilled. I've had a few of these, from good suppliers too, but you just send them back to send you replacement and everything's fine. It's not worth trying to machine it because you will not get it flat. I once machined a steam chest cover and it machined okay, I could see that it was chilled so I carried on to see what would happen, and the four corners which were chilled just would not machine but the rest did, so I got a very funny shaped steam chest cover. In the end I just contacted the supplier who sent me some replacements and they were fine. The other major problem with castings are sand blowholes. So you start machining your beautiful casting and a little black spot appears and the more you machine the more the black spot gets bigger and bigger and you see a network of holes in the casting full of sand. And the really annoying thing about it is you may already have machined some of the casting before the problem comes to light. Like this one for instance, the main boss is done okay, but I'm about to have problems on the outer edge. As you can see this is a really bad casting. Look at the state of it. Look at the lumps on the spokes and they are really hard. I did try with the needle file but got nowhere. Great for this demonstration though. If you watched the previous video in this series all about machining a casting, I gave a more detailed view as to what I'm doing. I'm not going to bother doing it twice. I nearly went into a coma on the last one. So now I've turned the flywheel round in the chuck, so it's now held by the newly machined part, and I'm attempting to machine the boss at the other side, which is equally hard. But I'll get through it. I'm taking very light cuts as you can see here, because the flywheel is not held by much in the chuck. So it's going to take a while. These castings were originally bought off the auction site that we all know and love, and the seller stated, casted off Stuart Turner castings, or something like that. Well, maybe they are, but I've never had a Stuart casting that machines like this. This is horrible. I'm using a carbide tip tool, as you can see. If I was using a high-speed steel tool, I don't think I'd get anywhere with this casting. I would probably have to sharpen the high-speed steel tool before every pass. And if I put more pressure on this carbide tip tool, I'd probably break it. Things get slightly better once I get into the casting. It seems that this casting is sort of surface chilled. So once the tool gets past that, things get slightly easier, but not a lot. Time now to use the centre drill and make a hole in the centre boss. 
and you can feel how hard this stuff is even with the centre drill. That's another thing to consider with a casting. If you machine a casting that's not good and is alternate hard and soft, you will still have to drill some holes in the casting for the steam chest, the steam chest covers, the cylinder covers, etc. And it would be very bad if one of the drills broke and even worse if you got further on and a tap broke. But luckily this video is about machining a flywheel and the only drilling and tapping you would have to do would be for the grub screw to secure the flywheel to the crankshaft. So just to echo what I've been saying, if you do get a casting like this, send it back to the supplier. And if you bought the castings from eBay, you can also send them back. But in my case, I'm perfectly happy with them. They're perfect for this video demonstration. And that's why I machined one of the castings that you saw at the beginning first, without filming it, to see what it was like. And that wasn't too bad. Although I did have to machine off quite a lot of the outer part of the flywheel to get through some sand blowholes. And that's why it looks considerably smaller than this one. Right, we're up to the part where I'm using the life centre to support the flywheel, so we can attack the outer edge. Here it is. The chilled outer edge. If you have a look at the lathe tool, you'll see that the lathe tool is moving up and down, as it keeps contact in the hard part of the casting. Ordinarily, if I wasn't filming this for this video, I would take this casting out of the chuck and throw it in the bin. But I'll carry on. Again, you can see that the tool's still moving a little bit, but it's getting through the rubbish that's on the edge of the flywheel. But we haven't gone across the front yet. And here we go. Unlike in the previous video, I didn't have to slow down the spindle speed, because this is a much smaller diameter flywheel. The speed's OK, and here's the tool cutting quite well. So far, so good. Look at the rubbish flying off the tool. Carbide tips are amazing, because as I mentioned earlier, if you were using a high-speed steel tool, you would be constantly sharpening it. So everything looks OK now for the moment, but hang on, what's that? Ah, a shiny part. On a good quality casting that isn't chilled, you would get a uniform grey colour as the tool moves across the flywheel. So when it's finished, you have a nice uniform grey colour flywheel that can, if you wish, be polished using some emery cloth or just left as it is. But this is not going to look like that, as you can see here. The shiny parts are caused by the casting being chilled and those parts are much harder than the rest of the casting. And this flywheel is going to look really bad on the steam engine you're going to fit it to. The good news is that the casting is still well oversized, so we can actually try a few more times to get through the chilled area. And already it's looking slightly better. Looking on the bright side, at least I can't see any blowholes. What I can see though, owing to the fact that the tool's been given a real hammering going through the hard outer shell, is that the flywheel's out of true again, even though it's held tightly in the chuck with the live centre pushed against it. Although I must confess I am taking rather heavy cuts. What I'm doing now is setting the traverser to the opposite direction, so the cutting tool will cut away from the chuck. This is often a good idea. Because of the shape of the tool, it means that you will get more of a gradual cut. So if we watch this for a moment or two, and see whether we get a grey colour or a shiny colour. Aha, a grey colour. So the cutting tool is getting underneath the part of the casting that's chilled. And hopefully, if it carries on like this, we should get a good cut. You should also notice that the chippings are different. They're really piling up on the cutting tool now, and they're a different colour, even the chippings are grey. I must say though, that sometimes, no matter what you do with the cutting tool, you cannot get under the chill. So it will be impossible to turn the part. In which case, as I've said before, either throw it away or return it to the manufacturer. This is looking okay now, I'm quite pleased with this for such a horrible flywheel. I'm using the file as before to take the edges off, but with this being a small flywheel and very close to the chuck, I would turn it round before doing the other side. So as it machined okay in the end, it's probably worth cleaning up the spokes and adding it to my collection of flywheels. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.